this is my small collection of manga and I don't own very much but I wanted to show you what I do have and use this video to sort of explain how I discovered manga and what got me interested in it so and I guess I'll put these in order of the story here so it goes like this I back in uh, when I was very young I thought manga was dirty I thought it was like adult themed pornographic comics or something for some reason I had that idea so I never really looked at it I never looked for it but some of my friends in the military liked it and I thought, well, these guys are pervs. So, you know, I, I I had no idea that manga, what it was. So years go by and then my wife gets me a subscription to um, Loot Crate and Nerd Block. And in the Loot Crate, one of them had this manga, Neon Genesis. The Shinji Ikari Raising Project. So, I, I mean, I never would have bought a book on the basis of this cover. But I was like, well, if they're going to put Minga in Loot Crate or Nerd Block, it's probably not that bad. So, uh, so I had my very one and only and first Minga here. And I, uh, you know, found it interesting. So I kept it in my collection, even though I... I sold a lot of my other Loot Crate and Nerd Block stuff or just gave it away after a while because it just turned into a big accumulation of junk. Uh, but I kept this and I was like, well, okay, this isn't, you know, I mean, this isn't really what I had thought it was. It's just stories, you know, it might be for a slightly more mature reader, but it's far from being, you know, dirty graphic content. So, nice to know. Then my friend from Germany sent me this, which was Resident Evil Minga in German. So, I really liked the artwork in this one. And it's gruesome and it's a horror comic. And I know Resident Evil, so I'm like, well, there you go. It's, it's, uh... It's just stories. It's so it's comic stories, and I started figuring out what manga really was. So when the pandemic started, I was looking. I was interested in maybe starting a manga, and what started this interest really was I was playing a game called Yakuza. And in that game, the main it was I think it's Yakuza Four. In that game, your character goes to stores and he collects, reads manga books. So that really got me interested too because I started seeing for what it was, it's just really well-crafted, long stories with lots of artwork and everything. And I finally figured out that you could have a lot of pleasure reading manga. So another YouTuber who I like, uh, by way of her channel, recommended this to me. I don't have a lot of experience with Japanese uh, cartoons other than Speed Racer, Star Blazers, Voltron, uh, Battle of the Planets, stuff like that. So I started watching Studio Ghibli movies with, with Mary and we really just fell in love with um, every one of them we really liked. I really like Spirited Away. It's my favorite Studio Ghibli movie. So I was looking for something that would sort of be along the same lines as Spirited Away. And this is what came up. XXX Holic. So I went ahead and ordered the first one, two, three. And then I got six because it came with one. And so I have the first three to read. And then I got, if I'm really liking it, I can get four and five. And then I'll have six and I can just continue to read it. And it also has other series that branch off of it and everything. And now that I'm interested in it too, another channel I like to watch, Kevin Street. Uh, he does great, enthusiastic comic book reviews. I just absolutely love watching his channel. And uh, he 
read uh, Battle Angel Alita. And I really want to get into that one next because it looks great. The way he reads it gets me interested in it. He, he, you can tell he loves the story and he shows how much pleasure he gets out of reading it. So it got me excited too. So I think I want to look into buying Battle Angel Alita too. So anyway, now that I've told you my story, I wanted to show you my very small collection of manga. And then now, maybe if you were like me and don't know anything about it, now you'll know a little bit. If you already know about manga, just forgive my ignorance. Uh, and I'm going to admit, uh, I've only read the first one of XXXHolic. I haven't read this one. And I flipped through this a, a, a lot, but I, I can't read the German. But it's still really cool to look at. So, I'm going to start with Neon Genesis, Evangelion, the Shinji Ikari Raising Project, number one, which came with Loot Crate, and put out by Dark Horse, which is an American comic company, but they're buying some licenses to manga and translating it in English. And with that, you'll see that it warns you if you start opening the book and reading from the beginning because as you probably know the Japanese language reads the opposite direction than English so it would be a much difficult task to translate it if they tried to present the book as opened in the usual English way so you actually would open it from the front and another cue that you might get is the manga will have color in the beginning to open the story so this is not really this style here is not really my cup of tea like the the schoolgirl whatever thing it's or Sailor Moon or whatever that is it's not really my style but I, like I said, I kept this book because it was my only piece of manga. And it was just, you know, so I could look at it as a curiosity. So I'm, I, like I said, I haven't read this story. It doesn't look like it would appeal to me that much. Although I might read it. I might start it since I have number one. And it might be a story I'd like to get into. Just don't know. I mean... Nope, there's my stomach. <laughs> I just got back from the gym and uh, it makes me hungry. So, sorry about that. It does have a little bit of, uh, as you can see, a little uh, partial nudity. And this was in Loot Crate, but it, it, like this is still, I wouldn't call this graphic, but I would say this is more nudity than you would find in most western comic books which I mean that's just the style of Japan I think and you know America is a little bit more you know we're a little bit more on the conservative side so that may have been one of the things that as I was coming up many years ago, manga was more of a taboo kind of thing. And maybe that was part of it, was the idea that it might be a lot more vulgar than a comic book. But let me just take us back a few more years. In the 1950s, there was a, a panic, a moral panic in the United States that comic books were going to create juvenile delinquents. And we're talking Captain America and Spider-Man and, you know, Superman comics. So, oh, there goes my stomach again. Uh, I will try to get through this as quick as possible so I can eat. <laughs> Not subject you all to that. Some of the artwork in this is pretty good. I like this, this beach sky scene. But this seems more like a soap opera kind of story, not really my, um, I'm, 
the the reason I, as later in the video when I show you XXX Holic, uh, there's a reason I like stuff a little bit along those lines more. So yeah, this is interesting artwork and it's very much in the Japanese style with the faces, the eyes. And then we get to the end and there's little kind of ash canny kind of stuff here, little extras. Mizato's fan service center. Well, we usually associate fan service with. I mean, it can be lots of things. So, but so anyway, that's this one that came with Loot Crate. Um, the next one I want to show you is this Resident Evil my friend sent me. Morhawa Desire. Uh, this is in German, and uh, but I think he sent it to me just for the novelty of it to have it. And for the artwork, uh, it doesn't warn you unless it's warning you in German, which it might. But uh, not to start on the end, but this doesn't look like the beginning of the story, whereas this does with some really rich colors. Um, uh, very, very good. Different artwork, more in the direction of the kind of stuff I like to read and look at. Zombies. Really good artwork. I mean, that's really good. Then we get into the story. And now this is the, this is the kind of artwork I really like. More detailed and more realistic. And I was not a critique, but you know, this is what I like. Everyone... And this looks like a great story. The artwork in this is stunning. Just brilliantly photorealistic drawing here. I think I've seen that going in it left. Um, I guess every girl in these books dressed less like that. Like the, the sailor outfit. There's the umbrella corporation. Let me get some coffee here. I might quell my stomach a little bit. I'm hungry. Oh, good zombie art. I mean, look at that artwork. It's like photorealistic. Isn't that amazing? The transformation to the zombie. So cool. I mean, this is some stunningly good artwork. Kind of reminds me of the beginning of uh, Zombieland. <laughs>
There's some really good artwork in this. Really, really cool. And then we get to the beginning, or the end. <laughs> and then we get to the sort of, uh, the artwork, or special episode it says. So there's an ash can in the end of this. Very cool. So that's Resident Evil. Next is this. This is XXX Holic. So the basis of this story is this is a witch and she has like a witch's shop and she lures this young man auspiciously to help him to basically become her servant cook chauffeur manservant everything it's the comedy i mean it's a fantasy supernatural comedy but it also has parables and lessons about human nature in it dealt out in different scenarios that he gets involved in and he, he learns lessons from her while he's doing all of her bidding kind of but picture the karate kid if mr miyagi was a, a female witch and dango wasn't getting beat up he just needed to learn a lot about life so it's pretty funny uh and of course, if you open like you're going to read in the beginning, you're going to get the warning. Manga is a completely different type of reading experience. And if you turn the page, you've gone too far. So the story begins here in color with rich colors here and really good artwork. And I really do like the artwork and imagination in this and these stories a lot. It's just very whimsical and it is a very much like something you'd find in a Studio Ghibli cartoon. Uh, there's your table of contents. Honorifics is what well, honorifics are is if you, you know, Daniel San, you know, like the San at the end sensei things like that there's a little glossary that explains what all of those mean sensei kohai senpai chan and you know in the beginning of the book it'll give you a glossary for this the honorifics that you'll need to understand the story better so now we get to the story itself and we see how he meets the witch and her crazy shop with her little her little supernatural pets <laughs> and it's funny i mean the whole idea is it's it's a comedy but as time goes on she and well he starts to appreciate her and she starts to appreciate him and they they become somewhat of a team and that's the idea of the story so and then you just have this pair and they go through like wacky kind of misadventures and never so often the chapter breaks there'll be some artwork and some of the, some of the parts of this are a little shocking like there's some shocking deaths and just some things I was I read this all in one sitting the first one and I'm like this book is a lot more uh, intense than I thought it would be it's funny but it's also got some black humor I guess you could say like I guess you could describe it as a black comedy because uh, it's not all milk and peaches it's kind of it's got some dark elements to it as well get some coffee Did I say milk and peaches? I think I met peaches and cream. I'm tired. I did a whole work day. The whole gym day. I'm really tired and hungry right now. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, I do want to show this to you before I get some dinner.
to be continued. And then there's all of this extra stuff here. See, it just goes into everything about the creatures, the artifacts. See, translation notes. It shows you what it looks like. I think there's a part, yeah, it shows you what it looked like in Japanese. Really, anything you can think of is in here, too. And then there's a segment of another story. Volume 2, so. So that's volume 1. Then I got volume 2, which I'm looking forward to starting. I really do like the covers. I mean, just appreciate the, uh, the really beautiful design of these colors. That's one of the things I really was drawn, drew me to these books. I mean, the artwork is really, really cool, and it's style I really like. More honorifics. And then we get to the story. And I'm not going to flip as many pages, because I don't want to give away too many spoilers for myself. Because I'm still reading it. But uh, I do like the little picture artwork inserts they put in here. And you know, don't blame me for thinking what I thought about Manga. With a name like XXXholic, I would have thought this was just, you know, like, just totally dirty. But it's not. <laughs> Next is Volume 3. Once again, with the pretty art. I mean, I really do like the artwork in this a lot. I just like to look at them all together to tell you the truth. I think they all make a great picture. Sort of the Victorian thing going on. More honorifics. Kind of shows how he is basically like valet, waiter, chauffeur, you know, as the book, you know, as the story is, is comedy, basically. But, uh, another, it also has a Harry Potter element to it as well. I think, and I'm seeing that a little bit without giving away spoilers. This little character is really cool looking. And we get to the end. Okay, now the last issue I have is number six. With the really, really cool artwork. The cover is sort of a plastic cover, which I like. Very sturdy. So it feels like this will last. <laughs> the, uh, the sort of cat creature there. B 
beautiful, colorful artwork. And then we get to the story. And you know when you read manga, you read it exactly opposite from how you read in English. So if I was to read this page, I would say, I say, anyone who'd see a cat's face and go into a panic must be the rudest of people. What's all the noise about Watanuki? And he, Watanuki is the, uh, the, the guy who she is using. We run out of snacks to go with our drinking. Oh. Good evening, Yuko-chan. Good evening, Akari-chan. So you get a little taste of the honorifics and you read exactly the opposite way as an English book. Really, is it that time of the year already? Let's move the small talk off me, please. Now both of them were staggeringly drunk. Watanuki hurried up. Drinks, we need drinks, we need drinks. Anything you say. Jeez, now I'm going to have to stock up on Ski Kayabi for the hangovers tomorrow. So, that's how you read it. And once you get used to it, you, you, you it gets easier. Now, I like how all of them have a, uh, this, the warning page in the beginning. So, really cool artwork, cool story, fantasy, supernatural comedy. So this is the kind of manga that I can immerse myself into. And hopefully, whenever I can find some time in my life, I can get back to this. So, that was XXXHolic, Volumes 1. So that's 1, 2, 3, and... Six plus Resident Evil and Neon Genesis. And that's my very small manga collection. I told you it was small. But anyway, I hope you got something out of the video and maybe I give you some ideas if you're interested in, in finding some manga stories to read. Give some of these a try. And if you are an experienced manga reader, like I said, forgive my, you know, rookie mistakes. <laughs> so, um, until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video. And subscribe if you haven't done so. Bye.